اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا ارحم الراحمين. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefit us, benefit us from what He taught us and increase us in knowledge. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Please, the brothers in the back, please, just if we can keep it down. Today, inshallah ta'ala, in the first uh, session, we discussed Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, radiallahu anhu ardah. Last week, we discussed Sufyan al Thawri. And by the way, alhamdulillah, good news. Uh, a brother who was blessed with a baby last week, he named his son Sufyan after Sufyan al Thawri. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Which is great, inshallah. May Allah make him like Sufyan, inshallah. And today, we decided to introduce a, a woman to show that our legends and our heroes are not only men, we also have women that made our history very prosperous. We all know that the first Muslim is a woman. The first person who prayed behind Rasulullah is a woman. And the first shahida, the first shaheed in Islam is a woman. Subhanallah. So today's uh, legend, if somebody can close the doors, please, because the brothers are talking right there. Today is a Sahabiya, a companion. Her name is Nusayba bint Kaab. Nusayba bint Kaab. And her nickname is. Anybody knows? Ummu? Ummu Umara. Ummu Umara. Ummu Umara, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, she had two sons, Habib and Abdullah, Habib and Abdullah from their first marriage. And her husband, his name is Ghaziya bin Bin Amru. <coughs> Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he said about her, Umm Umara witnessed the Pledge of Aqaba. She witnessed the Pledge of Allegiance, the second uh, Pledge of Aqaba. She participated in the battles of Uhud, Khaybar, and also witnessed the Fath of Mecca, and she participated with the Battle of Yarmouk on the days of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda. Umm Umara is telling the story of what happened in the Hudaybiyah when they did the pledge to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all know the story. First small group came. Then after that, 73 men came and two women. One of those women was Umm Umara Nusayba bint Kaab. عقبة عفوا العقبة حلف حلف العقبة اه when they came she's telling the story after everybody gave the bay'ah to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم after everybody gave the bay'ah they told Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم we have two women with us Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said <coughs> I take their pledge in the same way I took your pledge. But I do not shake hands with women. I take the same pledge with them, but I do not shake hands with women. This is, Ya Akhwan, the first lesson from the story. And I know this is a very, a very sensitive issue for all our brothers, the doctors, the IT guys, the, and the business, they are faced on a daily basis of shaking hands with the opposite gender. But some people said, oh, this is only for Rasulullah Wasallam." But the other hadith in At-Tabarani, 
قال عليه الصلاة والسلام If one of you were to be struck in his head with an iron needle, it would be better for him than if he were to touch a woman he is not allowed to. It's better for you to be hit with a needle on your head than to shake hands or touch a woman that is not your mahram. So this is a general rule for all Muslims. Now we sometimes are in a tough situation And some people say, but your brother, uh, I have a clean heart. Well, your heart is not cleaner than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he did not shake the hand. So it is a very simple choice. Either I upset Allah or I upset the woman in front of me. And wallahi, the choice is easy. You could say it in a very respectful, you don't have to be rude, very respectful way. There's nothing, no, nothing personal. This is my deen. As a matter of fact, every time I try it, you get more respect. You get more respect. Now, if, keep in mind, you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing it for the sake of Allah. And some ibadat are, are a little bit hard. But at the end of the day, my main goal is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Yusuf Estes, he came up with a... With a answer he said when when a non mahram woman put her hand to shake to put her hand out to shake my hand i tell her i only shake hands with two kinds of women either a little girl that she's nine less than nine years old or a very very old ugly woman and you are neither one of them and you are neither one of them. So in a joke way, it will pass. A lot of brothers say, I'm sick, you know, this and that. Whatever it takes, but it's better always to tell the excuse of the deen. Because this is the truth. You are not hiding anything. This is not your deen. This is not something that you made up. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said. And it's the ultimate truth. And it's the best thing for me, whether I know it or not. Now... Nusayba radiallahu anha wa ardaha she was from the people in uh, from the Ansar who were waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to arrive to Medina and she was very happy with his arrival years passed by and then the battle of Uhud took place we all know the details of the battle how Rasulullah sallallahu sallam assigned the 50 archers and told them not to move no matter what happens, don't move. We all know the story. And then when Khalid bin Walid saw that moment and took advantage of it, Rasulullah sallallahu as Umm Umara is narrating the story. She said, the people have left Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone and until he was surrounded by only 10 people. Out of these 10 people, it was me, my husband and my two sons. Yani 40% of the people covering Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the family of Umm Umara, subhanAllah. And they were defending him fiercely because the people, khalas, they want to kill Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They want to take advantage of that moment and kill Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw a man from the Sahaba running away. So he told him, if you want to run away, run away, just give us your shield. Because Umm Umara did not have a shield. So he threw his shield. Umm Umara took the shield. Subhanallah. She stood. She took the shield. With one hand, she's having a, a sword. And in the other hand, she has the shield. And both, she's protecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She risked her life to protect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw her son Abdullah bleeding, a man came and hit with a sword her son, almost cut his arm. So when he saw him bleeding, Rasulullah ordered Umm Umara, go take care of your son's wounds. She went, subhanAllah, look at the mother, ya akhwan. She went and she took care of his wounds and then she told him, rise up and continue fighting. Get up and continue fighting. SubhanAllah. Hearing that, Rasulullah who said, وَمَن يُطِيقْ وَمَن يُطِيقْ مَا تُطِيقِينَ يَا أُمُّ عُمَارَةَ 
ومن يطيق ما تطيقين يا أم عمارة Who can bear what you are bearing يا أم عمارة You're going through all this and you see your son bleeding and you're still telling him to get up and fight and defend me Allahu Akbar Then another man came from the enemy He said I will not leave this battle until I kill Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he was wearing double armor he hit Umm Umar a wound that took one year to heal. He said, show me Muhammad. May I not survive if he survives. Mus'ab bin Umair and Umm Umar, they came to defend Rasulullah against this man. He is the man who killed Mus'ab. He killed Mus'ab. Mus'ab died in, in the battle of Uhud. And she continued fighting fiercely. Then Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, when he saw this whole family fighting around him, he said, may Allah bless this house. May Allah bless this household. May Allah يعني, give barakah to this household of Umm Umayra. May Allah be merciful toward them. Can you imagine Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, in such a situation making dua for you? So Umm Umayra took advantage of that moment. Subhanallah, يعني, in the battlefield, and you could imagine what's going on, or we cannot even imagine what's going on. She turned around and she said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that me and my family will be with you in Jannah. She said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that me and my family will be your companions in Jannah. Qala alayhi salatu was salam, Allahumma ja'alhum rufaqai fil Jannah. Ya Allah, Make them my companions in Jannah. Look at this beautiful dua from Rasulullah to this great, great family. And Rasulullah kept on saying in the, in the battle of Uhud, he said, everywhere I turn, I turn left, I turn right on the day of Uhud, and all I see is Umm Umara fighting. She was better than Fulan and Fulan and Fulan. And he started naming some Sahaba, men. He used to say, she is better than so and so and so. Subhanallah, ya akhwan. She was a mujahida. She was very, very brave. Mal tafattu yameenan wala shimalan illa wa ana araha tuqatil duni. Everywhere I look, I saw Umm Umara fighting to defend me. Now, Umm Umara, Rasulullah sallallahu died. And then after that, Abu Bakr radiallahu an became the Khalifa. And then at that time, Musaylam al kazzab the one who claimed prophecy, he was spreading rumors and making up ayat that he is a prophet. So before Rasulullah died, he sent Habib, who is the son of Umm Umara, to tell Ya Musaylama, stop all this peacefully. So he went with another Sahabi. When they got there to Musaylama, Musaylama said to the first Sahabi, Who is Muhammad? He said, Rasulullah. He said, how about me? He said, you are not. He said, who's Muhammad? He said, Rasulullah. How about me? When he saw that they're going to kill him, he said, you are Rasulullah too. So he let him go. Now we came to Habib. He said, who's Muhammad? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, who, are, who am I? He said, I, I can't hear you. He said, who's Muhammad? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, how about me? He said, I, I, what? I can't hear you. So every time he said, I can't hear you, he started cutting a piece of his body. Until he killed him into pieces. He died, Habib, the son of Umm Umara, died as a shaheed, subhanallah. He could have been excused, like Allah said in the Quran, that his heart is safe. He knows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he could have saved himself. But he took the upper level, subhanallah. So what did... 
What did uh, Umm Umara, his mother, say when she found out what happened? She said, it was for such a situation that I prepared him. This is why I raised him for. Oh, mothers. <laughs> ya Allah, where are these women, Ya Akhwan? She said, this is what I prepared him for. So her first son died. Then the battle of Yarmouk came, uh, the battle of uh, Yamama came on uh, the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu also against Musaylama. She went and she fought. She had 11 wounds in her body and her uh, hand, her wrist from here, all this is cut, cut off in the battle. And she said, Wallahi, I did not care about all this when I heard that my son, Abdullah, killed Musaylama. Whoever killed Musaylama were two people, Wahshi, Wahshi, he said, with this sword, I, ki I killed the best man and I killed the worst man. Who's the best man? Hamza. He said, with this sword, I killed the best man and the worst man. And when he was killing him, Abdullah came and helped him finish, finish Musaylama. So her to uh, this whole family was blessed. Subhanallah. All of them died as shuhada. Rasulullah sallallahu made dua for them to be his companions in, in Jannah. And we are still remembering them till this day and till the day of judgment because of her bravery and her courage and her love to this deen and defend, defending this deen with everything that she has. So, Umm Umara died the year 13 after Hijrah in the Khilafah of Umar radiallahu anhu arda. So I guess the next uh, person who had a baby girl, we have a name for you, <laughs> Nusayba. You could name your daughter Nusayba, such a beautiful name. And as a matter of fact, uh, يعني, when I was growing up, that name was very popular, but in the, in the age of my, my mother, then it disappeared now completely. But in the, people who are now in their 60s, 70s, that name was very popular in the, in the Arab world. But now you hardly hear it. But subhanAllah, if you wanna remember this character on a daily basis, inshallah ta'ala, that's an option of uh, a beautiful name to name our daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring from our generations and our ummah somebody like Umm Umara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with this kind of people on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in Iman. Jazakumullah khair, wa barakallah fikum. We'll see you Monday with an ayah and a tafsir, and we'll see you next Thursday, inshallah ta'ala, with another hero. Please try to attend Fajr. Fajr is at 5.45 tomorrow morning, and it's the most beloved salat to Allah, is Salat al-Jum'ah in Jama'ah, Salat al-Fajr of Jum'ah in Jama'ah. Barakallah fikum, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashad an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka, wa natubu ilayk.